time to go frogging when it's hot and wet. The wetter, the better. The more frogs you'll see. It's amazing it's not a more popular hobby. It's during these humid times that the male frogs are literally yelling out for sex. And this is great for us froggers, as not only does it help us locate these animals in the dark, but it also allows us to identify them, for each species has its own unique call. And this, of course, is the uh, infamous cane toad, quite common on the edge of the rainforest, particularly uh, long roads and tracks at night time. They've got uh, a quite a nice call, a very evocative call. It sounds a little bit like a motorbike or a generator in the background, a sort of a... And these are the parotoid or parotid glands. And there's venom or poison exuded from all over the body, but these are the main reservoirs here. But some frogs, even when calling, are a real challenge to find. So to find some of the more cryptic species, I'm in the Daintree Lowlands at Crocodilus Lodge near Cow Bay. And I'm in the middle of the rainforest, in the middle of the rainy season, waiting for the rain. And I shouldn't have to wait for too long. There's one group of frogs that are very hard to find in the rainforest. They tend to live on the forest floor and they're also very, very small, around about the size of an Australian 10 cent coin. Like most frogs, the males call, especially when it's wet. So you can locate them. However, the problem is they're very ventriloquial, so they're actually very hard to pinpoint. So there's a technique called triangulation, and it involves two or more people. The more is better, but two is okay. And basically, uh, you're looking for the frog. And uh, I'll say the 10 cent coin is the frog that you can't see yet. And uh, both people have got uh, flashlights or torches and they basically want to point them towards where they think the frog is calling. Now the frog has a fairly ventriloquial call. And uh, for the torches, I'll use these tea bags as examples. Excuse me. And basically the tea bags or the torches head in to where you think the frog is. Now normally if you were trying to find the frog by yourself, you would naturally tend to overshoot the ventriloquial call. But with a couple of people, where those two people cross over is where the frog is actually located. Thanks for that. So these little guys are the microhylids. They're often called the whistling frogs. On warm, wet nights around the Dane Tree, you can often hear them calling. Like a bird. Unlike most frogs that have to pop their eggs into water to stop them drying out, because the forest floor here is so wet, microhylids lay and look after their eggs in the moist jungle litter. And with no tadpole stage, they end up living their entire life cycle hidden away on the forest floor.